Hey guys, this is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite squat variations, and that is the Hatfield Squat. If you have never performed them, I'm telling you, they are a fantastic exercise to experiment and play with. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the how to and the how to set up Hatfield Squats, along with three reasons why I like performing them. But that all being said, let's go ahead and dive into the how to. So before I dive into the physical how to of performing Hatfield Squats, we need to first talk about how to set them up. So if you don't have squat handles for your squat rack, there are two common ways of setting up and performing Hatfield squats. The first is the most simple, and this is where you're going to simply set J hooks as if you're going to be doing safety bar squats, and you'll use the rack as a means to hold on to. This is generally preferred by lifters who have longer arms and taller lifters who don't mind the width of a rack. If you have shorter arms or if you're a shorter lifter, you might find that this is a little bit uncomfortable to hold on to, especially if your rack is a little bit wider in nature. The second way is to use an opposing barbell to create a means to hold on to. So let's say that the rack is right here and we have J hooks right here with the safety squat bar. You'll then set J hooks on the opposing side of that rack for a barbell to run across. You'll then grip onto this bar as a means of holding onto. The reason we set it on the opposing side of the rack is because if anything goes wrong with that Hatfield squat, you're not gonna pull this out. If you have the J hooks on the same side, you could run the risk of popping this lower bar out if you lose balance, and that's not gonna be in a good situation. Now, when you are setting up for your Hatfield squats, think about when you are fully erect and standing, that your arms are almost in like a downward angle here, and almost like what would be like a 20 degree angle with the arm. This will vary a little bit based on your anatomy, but ideally you wanna have it in a position to where when you're going through the eccentric and concentric, your arms can simply follow and you're not having to reach or reach down when you're performing Hatfield squats and you're using your hands for a little bit of assistance and balance. So step one is unracking the bar and establishing where you need to be standing in relation to your Hatfield squats. So when unracking the bar, you're simply gonna get under the safety squat bar like you normally would, midfoot under the bar, body nice and stacked, you'll stand up, let that bar settle, and then you'll perform your normal squat walkout. Now, depending on if you're using a barbell, squat handles, or the rack, that's then gonna tweak where you're gonna be standing in relation to performing your Hatfield squats. This is gonna be individual, and it's gonna be based on preference. So two rules of thumb when establishing where you need to be standing for your Hatfield squats is number one, if you are standing up in the concentric with your Hatfield squat, and the safety squat bar is clipping that J-hook that you're unracking that bar from, then you're standing too close to the rack. Conversely, in point number two, if you're having to reach and hold on to anything and pitching forward in the Hatfield squat, then you're likely a little bit too far. So play with the middle ground there. So for example, I like to use the rack setup and hold onto the rack. That will generally translate to a foot position that's about like six to eight inches from the rack. Now that can vary a little bit. So again, play with different ranges to find what works best for you and find what allows you to perform Hatfield squats with really good mechanics in regard to your torso and pelvis. Step number two is setting up your hand positioning and then also understanding what your arms are supposed to be doing in the Hatfield squat. So if you're using the squat handle or barbell setup, again, your arms are gonna be more in this like relaxed position here when they are down with a nice soft bend in the elbow. Similarly, if you're holding onto the rack, you're gonna have a similar posture with the arm. It just might vary a little bit because it is gonna be a tad wider in most cases. Now, what are the arms supposed to be doing in the Hatfield squat? So ideally, you're gonna be wanting to use the arms as a means of providing you with more balance but then also assisting you here and there to hit higher volumes that you normally wouldn't be capable of doing with normal traditional back squats. That's why Hatfields can be so great because with the arms working as a constraint, we can generally maintain a slightly more vertical torso position with a more vertical bar path to drive a high stimulus to the lower body as they are working as a means to assist with the physical squat mechanics that we are trying to achieve during our Hatfield squat sets. So step number three is the descent. So the eccentric or lowering portion of the Hatfield squat. So to begin your descent, I want you to focus on breaking at the hip and knee simultaneously and thinking about sitting into the hole versus like hinging backwards like some of us can be prone to, myself included, in barbell back squats. Why we do this is because with Hatfield squats and our arms serving as constraints, we can generally maintain a slightly more vertical torso position. This then translates to a more vertical bar path. So by thinking about breaking at the hips and knees simultaneously and sitting into the hole, we'll be able to maintain better balance and create a bar path that's relatively over the midfoot. This is gonna be fantastic for one, helping us to achieve depth while maintaining a slightly more upright torso and driving a high lower body stimulus. So now that you've hit a range of motion that you're after and you have controlled the eccentric or lowering portion of the Hatfield squat, it is now time to start step four, which is the ascending portion of the movement, AKA the concentric or standing portion. Now, when you are performing the ascending 
portion of the Hatfield squat, I want you to focus on two things. Number one, driving into the floor. Like think as if you're like leg pressing the floor away. And then number two, I want you to focus on maintaining a more vertical torso position and using those hands to assist here. So this is where the hands come into play with the Hatfield squat. Because they can help us maintain a more vertical torso position, we can drive a nice high stimulus to the lower body and keep weight off the back. Whereas in a normal back squat, we might be having more of a hinge or pitch pattern with our squat. So by using the hands to assist here, we can focus on number one, driving through the floor, and two, being a little bit more vertical with our movement mechanics. Again, the hands are useful because they can assist with your mechanics and help you with balance. They are not gonna be completely inactive in the Hatfield squat. Now, obviously, you don't wanna be using your arms so much to where you're getting like a full-on upper body pump, but don't be afraid to use them, especially as fatigue starts to set in to maintain the mechanics you're after with Hatfield squats. To say they should only be active for like a percentage or something like that, I feel like that's very arbitrary and it's gonna change based off of the sets you're in, the intensity you're using, and the overall volume you're after. So that being said, once you have stood up with that weight, you're gonna squeeze the quads, squeeze the glutes, and then start that eccentric pattern and try not to cry because Hatfields are a killer. So there are countless reasons why you would actually program and do Hatfield squats, but three of my favorite and why I've implemented them into my programming is number one, they can be a fantastic squat variation for driving a nice high lower body stimulus, whether that be for strength or hypertrophy while keeping weight off of the back. This is why a lot of lifters will opt for Hatfield squats when they are focused primarily on lower body hypertrophy because with that more vertical torso position, we can really focus on what we're getting out of the quads, adductors, and glutes with this variation. The second reason why Hatfields can be awesome is if you have any form of lower back injury or if you're working around, let's say, a shoulder injury or any other injury, you can play with Hatfields to see, okay, can I use them and hit different ranges of motion without running into areas of pain? They can be a really dynamic tool for anybody who might not be able to do traditional squats due to an injury, due to pain, etc. So they can be an awesome tool to play with when you cannot do your traditional barbell back squats, front squats, or whatever variation you primarily use. The third reason why Hatfields can be awesome is if you are somebody like myself who typically has a more forward pitch in their squat patterning, they can be an awesome teaching tool for feeling what it's like to maintain a more vertical torso position while you are squatting. Now, obviously it's not a black and white direct carryover because the barbell back squat and the skill it takes to perform that exercise and a Hatfield are a little bit different. However, I do think they can be really useful for teaching the mechanics of what it's like to maintain a more vertical torso position through the eccentric and concentric movement patterns. And by using those hands, we can get a little bit more of a constraint focused stimulus because they can assist with how much and how little they are doing based on what we are trying to achieve in regard to the skill adaptations we are going with with our squats. All right, guys, that wraps up this video on Hatfield squats. This squat variation is quickly becoming one of my favorite squat variations ever. Honestly, it is very OP. And I think if you have longer legs or you're a taller individual, or if you have a problem with forward pitching in your squats, this variation can be fantastic for driving a nice high lower body stimulus without necessarily killing your back in the meantime. If you have any questions on Hatfield squats, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally. And PS, I know I have been a little bit slow with training content lately. I've been a little bit disenchanted with actually like the production of fitness content, but I promise you there will be more to come and I'm getting back on the wagon. I'm just dealing with a little bit of period of burnout with fitness content specifically. But as always guys, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.